Hey everyone, this is James Healy with Elation Loading and Acclaim Loading. And in this video today, I'm going to show you how to use the ESA2 software on the R500. This software is mainly for uh, the people that don't have access to a Windows laptop or computer to use the ESA Pro software that is Windows only. So it's just for uh, people that are on Mac or they just happen to have a Mac handy with them. Uh, you can use this on Windows, but if you have a Windows computer, we prefer that you use the ESA Pro software. This is the ESA 2 software, which you can download from Mac or Windows. So this is basically, this video is, is for the Mac users. So getting right off to it, we've already got our R500 plugged into the, the computer's USB port. And I'm just going to patch in some generic RGBW fixtures. RGBW, first channel 1, or fixtures 1, I'm just going to patch in 4 of them, go to editor, and uh, in some cases you might want to leave like a blackout scene, so I'm just going to leave this one empty, and double click, blackout, and create a new scene, and I want to click on this little scene builder up here so I can quickly and easily select all my lights and find the color. And I just want to just make them all blue. You can, uh, you can put them in a line if you don't want to. Move in a line. Check the address in here by mousing over it. So they're all in order, which is good. So this is the first thing I want, I'm just going to make purple. So I'm just going to leave that the way it is. And I'm going to click new scene. Open up the scene builder again. And this time I select all of them by myself. I've got the RGBW tab. You can, if you accidentally click off, you can drag to so select all of them again. It's actually enable. There you go. This, if this is selected, you can move them around. So when you shut this off, you can drag to, to multi select. That's what that's for. Uh, say if I want to create an effect, I do an effect, uh, I want to do pixel effect, I can choose between my effects here, just get a quick overview of what it is, and you can expand this to make it a little bit bigger, and if you click this, it just recenters all the fixtures right there. Uh, I can make the color width wider, shorter, do plasma effect, I'm chasing a different one, like a static one. So I'll just put some effects. If you mouse over it, you can do random fill. Some of these are more suited for large pixel quantities. And such. Just create just this window here. Um. Yeah, stuff like that. And you can also change up the colors. So if you want to change up this to like yellow right there. Or you can um, get rid of colors that you don't want to use. So once we're done with it, and I call it looks, make sure that they're selected. And we can click little drop down here. And typically you don't really want to mess with the compression. So we're not going to. But you can 
This just compresses the number of steps generated. So that way you don't have, you know, 20, 30, 40 different steps if it's just a small sequence. Um, so let's just hit generate. If you'd like to create a new scene, what this is going to do is put it into a different scene, scene button. We don't want to do that. We want to keep this one right here. So we just say no. And you can see the effect generated and cleared out in the builder. And now it is right here on this page. So if we click play, we see the effect playback. So now we've got a few scenes here. You get the idea. You can program whatever you want. Um, you can even create a new scene and do stuff step by step. You can click here to adjust your color. And then, say that's step number one. Step number two. Be all blue. So step one, step two, you can have a whole time, you can have a fade time, double click here, you got seconds, and we can play this right here. And that's how you can create your own steps for a step-by-step -step sequence. Uh, if you want it to fade in. So if you enable this box here, it's going to fade into the first fade time. That's what that is. So the next option, or I'm sorry, if you go to always loop, double click it, and you change it to a certain number, it's going to play this, play this loop, play the scene twice, you know, loop twice, and then you can set it up to automatically jump to the next scene. So if I want to go like this, so I'm going to go to the live now. It's going to play twice. Oh, but this played. So you click, so I black out, and make sure play is on if you have uh, stuff set up in the sequence. If I click on this scene, it's going to loop twice and then jump to the next scene. Because that's exactly what I told it to do right here. It's going to loop twice and jump to the next scene. And if I don't want it to do that, just leave it empty and just leave it on always loop. And then they'll always play and then they'll wait for you to select the next scene or not. Now the last part, or one of the last parts, is if you click on a scene and you click on this little gear, gear icons right here you can have this set up to trigger this is what you're going to want to do if you're using an R500 and you want something to play at sunrise or sunset this is where you would do it you click on the gear icon this little window opens up you check the box for time you either set your appointed time or your repeated time slot or you do sunrise plus one hour or sunrise, plus or minus one hour, and so on and so forth. If you do sunrise, you do every day, one day, or from month, day, to another month, another day. Or for one day, you can pick uh, one day, January, uh, so you want it January 1st to play a New Year's thing. It's going to do that. So you pick your day. Or a repeated time slot, or a point of time, or just sunrise, or just sunset. So once you set this up, this will then store that setting into the scene when you write it to the interface memory which I'm going to show you how to do in the next step. So we've got live window. This is where we can go back and test our scenes that we've created. 
Now we go to standalone though, and we are just going to do write memory. It's telling us that we're using this Demus Channels 1, last Demus Channel 16. Um, we don't have any port triggers, we don't have any. We, I didn't set up any time triggers. It says number of scenes, 4 out of 500. Number of steps, a total of 26 steps across all the scenes. And so if I just want to write all these to the panel, I just go ahead and click Write Memory. The little dialog comes up and it's written successfully. And now we can actually go and test and we can go to our R500 and scroll through the different scenes and then we'll start playing back on the panel. We just click stop and we're done. And that's that's really all there is to it. This is uh, this is just my quick video on how to get up and running for the Mac users with the R500 on the ESA2 software for Mac. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, comment below or shoot us an email at support at elationloading.com or email me directly, jameskay at elationloading.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.